Hello, this is Marlene Byrne with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching video Voters Guide. We are in the studios of Metro East to talk to the candidates running for the November 2018 general election. We have invited all the candidates who filed for this race. There are many reasons during this busy campaign season for candidates accepting or being unable to appear. With me today is Mark Kohler, running for U.S. Representative in the 3rd District, who was able to accept our invitation. We are sorry that one of the candidates in this race, Earl Blumenhauer, has been unable to accept our invitation. We urge voters to visit the League of Women Voters website and use the League's 411.org for comprehensive coverage, where candidates may also choose to include their information including some of their own video tubes. Video tubes. Now, as for the questions, uh, criminal justice has been a bipart has had bipartisan support, yet Congress has not been able to pass any substantive substantive legislation. What aspects of criminal justice reform would you support? Well, you know, we have. Uh, it's certainly been one of the most visible topics in Portland over the last several years. Uh, our our system now is, in my mind, is broken. We have, uh, fortunately, we do have a city council. I know we, we may have some changes to our city council, but we have the ability in, in Portland to deal with some of those issues here locally. One of the biggest challenges I see is the, the rules, essentially, of engagement for our police officers allow them to, to use their, their discretion to decide where there is physical danger to either themselves or the public and then to use deadly force where they feel it's appropriate. And the ability to assess that is an individual decision of police officers, which has um, unfortunately resulted in the death of a lot of people who should not have been killed for the acts that they may have been performing. And the oversight to that, unfortunately, is themselves. They make the rules that govern themselves. And I think that's one of the things that has to change is uh, civilian oversight and the, the, certainly the, there needs to be changes to those rules of engagement. When, when can you arbitrarily decide to use deadly force as a, as a police officer? That's, and I don't know whether we can do that on a national level or not. We can certainly push that on a national level, but there are certain things that our Constitution uh, gives powers to states versus the federal government. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly that's one of the big issues that I spend a lot of my time working with is families who have lost loved ones too. We just had another shooting just two days ago. Um, so it's a, it's a big problem nationally, um, the use of, now that's just the use, that's the police force, but there's also the whole business of uh, privatization of, of prisons and the, the changes that we've been going through as a nation in terms of criminalizing marijuana and the drug war itself. Those are also else, those are issues we can change on a national level. Those are ones that I would work very strongly for on a national level. Uh, I don't believe in privatization of our prisons. I don't believe in the way our the, the quote war on drugs has been conducted. Um, so those are a couple areas where I would really focus on. Okay, thank you. And I know we don't have a lot of time, so we'll go. <laughs> we, we could spend hours just talking yes, about that subject. That's true. We could. And uh, that our next question, though. What is your opinion on the current legislature's pull, decision to pull out of the Paris uh, Agreement and or climate change? And how big a priority do you think climate change should be on, on the next legislative agenda? Well, on a national level and on a global level, there is nothing more important to the future of our species, if you will, than you know the, the, the deniers, those who will not accept the realities of science, are doing a disservice to the people on this planet in favor of the corporations who are benefiting from mm. the destruction of our planet. Um, I, if I were to say of the one thing that would really want to be remembered if I was ever elected and actually got stuff on was being a fervent uh, environmentalist. Um, I believe that we need to save the planet. I don't think that uh, there's anything more important on a national level than to, uh, so back to the you know the power of climate thing of course I think it was a terrible decision for us to to abandon one one of the, the few things I've seen in my lifetime where the the peoples of this earth have gotten together and agreed in general that this is an important thing for all of us to work on together mm -hmm. and for us to bail on it because there's uh, quite honestly corporate interests I believe that's 
that's what pulls us out of there. I don't think it's a, an individual belief by the President of the United States that just that climate change is, is unreal or we're spending too much money on it. I think it's the people that support him uh, have, have sort of pushed that decision upon him and all the rest of us on this planet are, are living with the results of that. Okay, thank you. And uh, if elected, what are your top priorities during the next session of Congress to help specifically help people and Oregonians in this district? Yeah, I think healthcare is, you know, putting aside for a moment the, you know, the environmental issues that the world is facing. As far as what we do in this country, healthcare is the biggest issue that I see. I'm one of the lucky people who made it to 65 years old so I can have Medicare. <laughs> and it's a wonderful program. And I, I think that's, you know, I've seen, and probably you have too, in Washington, the, uh, there's a debate going on and a lot of the hate ads have been coming, uh, criticizing uh, Medicare for all is it's going to cost $100,000 for every person and $36 trillion in debt. <laughs> People throw these crazy things around. But um, I really believe that we need to really make not just verbal commitment to health care for all, but they should make, make it the reality in this. And I think um, people who are voting for Congress or for senators, they need to vote for those people who have not only just signed on to Medicare for all, but are willing to commit themselves to make that a reality. So that's, that's the one biggest issue on a national level that I would be fighting for. Okay, well, thank you. Sure. And this has been the Video Voter's Guide. And thank you for watching. The general election is Tuesday, November 6th. November 6th. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and be sure, and be sure you know your ballot measures and ex exercise your right to vote.